Zumi's prayers, and such are we. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God, and such we are. There is a wonderfulness of your love bestowed to us, such as we felt for our own infant children, wishing never to leave the sight, touch, and sound of them. What aspirations we had for them. And what of us? We have a glorious end which does not end. We shall live, as even now, within the great and wonderful love of Jesus. And all the gifts and powers that live in you will be ours forever. You desire that men should become, in the deepest sense, your children. Now the contemplation of blessedness is ours, the devout gaze on your love, the joyful confidence. Yours is the voice of personal assurance. We say to you, Abba, Father, and you call us beloved. Upon this day, and to seal these thoughts, rose up a fiery sun, as the kiss of a rosebud. It shouts to us, and such are we, so that the message floods all our day, the sons of God now upon the earth, but then in that higher place above the sun. The ocean over which stands the sun is some small measure of your love for us. We cannot see its depths, its breadth, and the intricate coastline of its full awareness of our lives. We imagine to ride upon magnificent forces this unwearied journey. How mighty the power of God drawing us up. We need not imagine all, for the life of the Christ was lived among us and with true record, the manger, the cross, the tomb, the ascension among angel hosts. You accept our poor affection for you and desire to see your own likeness in us. It is a love not put away by our sinfulness and shortcomings. It pours out its treasures on the unworthy. It speaks a great silence within the clamor of the world, stronger than death and sin armed with all power, gentler than the fall of dew, boundless, endless, measureless, free, the deep, deep love of Jesus. By your great blood sacrifice, we have the gift of a divine life like your own. You will not love us from afar, but from within. Yours is a complete bestowal. All which we thought we might humanly be in our own strength has failed but we shall have more. Out of the depths we cry to you, we plead with your heart of mercy, not nearly aware of our own wrongfulness from the heights come down upon us, the cataract of God's love, flooding us with joy and blessedness. There is great dignity to being your children and heirs to all which is the Son of God. And how are we sons? Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Everyone that does right is born of God. Everyone that loves you is born of you. Our sonship is the aim and purpose of your dealings with us and of all the revelation of your love in your Son. What glad consciousness to have this phrase, and such are we. You call out, my Son, and we answer, Here am I, Father. Now again we squint to the sun rising, as though to see another world. For this news is much to bear. We are straining our own credulity. Do I say words and creeds, or is my heart full of triumphal gladness? We do not diffidently say, in a humility containing too much self, I humbly hope I am your son. Is this an enticement to sanction our behavior? When God says, my son, we cleanly say to you, my father, it is not a question of worthiness or unworthiness. Do we believe your promise to Eve, to Abraham, to Moses, and to many others? I am thy exceeding great reward. But I am not emotional as my wife is and as others are. It is not about that. All who are chosen were in eternity the children of God. 
Perhaps over a long period of time, we warmly accepted this. Simon Magus was flamboyant. Jesus was not. Let us feel the contentedness of being held to your bosom. Amen.